Pam, and welcome everyone to today's presentation on enterprise-wide information security risk assessments. Now, there's a lot of reasons why you really need to be doing a risk assessment. I will have to start, though, and say first and foremost, your information is a very critical asset. I'd say probably second behind your employees, and that risk assessments are required by regulation. So to make sure that you're complying with these regulations, specifically um, starting off with GLBA, there's additional regulations that I've, I have on the next the next slide that we'll address just briefly. But we really want to start out with GLBA because that's when we first started seeing this requirement for having some type of a risk assessment. And if you look at the interagency guidelines that were issued by the FFIEC, you know you would find these specific bullet points. And I want you, as, as you look at this slide, I want you to take note. Um, I want you to remember, because you're, you're going to be able to apply these later on as we go through this presentation, that from a GLBA standpoint, identifying reasonable internal, external threats, those that are possible, the, the most likely to happen, identifying, evaluating the likelihood of occurrence of those threats, those risks, and what the potential impact is, and then assessing the sufficiency of the controls that are in place. So remember those three things. Now, while they were key and they were pointed out in the interagency guidelines, they're going to show up again, and I just want to make sure and reinforce that these are three key areas that you do need to remember because your risk assessment needs to address these. Hold on one second here. There we go. So other regulations, uh, there's other risk assessments that we have to do within the organization. You, you have a BSA risk assessment. If you're under Sarbanes-Oxley, there was a requirement for risk assessments under Sarbanes-Oxley. ACH requires a risk assessment. There's guidance out there, the remote deposit capture guidance called for doing risk assessment. We know our vendor management program calls for doing risk assessments. Business continuity requires a business uh, a risk assessment. ID theft red flags requires risk assessments. Um, if you remember looking at the information paper that was released towards the end of last year on cloud computing, Again, risk assessments come into play there. So just about everywhere we look, everywhere within the institution, there's going to be a requirement for a risk assessment. Now, why do I bring up all these other areas, the guidances and the regulations? Well, because I want to hopefully get across the point that if you use a consistent, repeatable pr approach, if you have a good process in place for doing a risk assessment, especially starting out with this information security risk assessment, it's going to give you a good basis. It's going to give you what you need, the procedures, the program that you can follow and branch off to do all of these other risk assessments that are required. So it's going to boil down to having a good repeatable process, and that's what I want to go through today. But if what I was just talking about from the standpoint of the regulatory requirements, the laws that are out there, if that doesn't necessarily motivate you to want to do a good comprehensive risk assessment, well, let me throw this out there for you. Managing risk is fundamental to the business of banking. I mean, you have, have to manage risks. So to make sure that you're looking at all the risk, and you have implemented the controls and things you need to do to mitigate them and to do this managing of the risks, well, the only way you're going to be able to accomplish that is if you have done some type of a risk assessment. And you may not have thought about what you've done in the past as a risk assessment, but in some ways that was at least the beginning of putting together a risk assessment. It may not have equated to the formal process with the formal outcome that we're going to talk about today and that your regulators expect you to have, but at some point you were always doing some type of a risk assessment. Now, not only does it help you manage those risks, 
but the results are also important for helping you put together your policies and developing those written procedures and looking at all the other controls that you need to have in place. Also, from a vendor management standpoint and an identity theft standpoint, it's going to give you some good information as far as what the risks are, what are the, the items that need to be protected, whether it's information or whether it's an actual system who's providing that system, who's providing that information, and then what do we need to do to manage the risk associated with those relationships. I also want to say that, you know, and you may want to write this down because I didn't put it up as a bullet point, but you, I wanted to, to make sure that we talk about it from the standpoint of providing justification or at least even helping management decide where to spend your dollars and, and input your resources. I mean, for those of you that would be requesting the dollars and the people, well, here you go. I mean, this is going to help you with your justification when you're preparing or at least trying to defend your budget or those requests for additional controls or for additional people to do monitoring. So it's not just all from the regulatory requirement of, you know, you need to have it because your regulators want you to have one. There are some really good reasons for putting together a good risk assessment. All right, let's move on and we want to talk about some definitions of risk. Now, I think as we look at these, we could probably all say, yes, those would definitely be the, you know, the things that I would say if somebody asked me to describe risk. This is what I would come up with in one way or the other. I mean, depending on who you ask and where you look, the potential of harm that may arise from some present process or future event, possibility of incurring losses or misfortune, chance of loss or damage, probability of harmful consequences or expected losses, and it can result from a variety of, of different sources, whether it's interactions between natural or human-induced hazards, vulnerable conditions. I mean, we could go on and on probably coming up with, with different terms and what, what risk actually means to us. But that just kind of gives you an idea. We just have a definition to, to use. And maybe when you're putting together your process for your risk assessment, you want to come up with a definition for risk. Now, when it comes to the mitigating or managing that risk, or what do we do with the risk, there's four, actually three that are recommended, but four things that you can do. You can accept the risk. Now, when I say you, I'm actually referring to the board, because this, could, this is actually supposed to be a board decision. Remember, the board is ultimately responsible for setting that risk appetite for the level of risk that the institution is willing to take. So with that risk, we can accept the risk. We can also mitigate the risk. We can transfer risk. And we can ignore the risk. Now, that's the one that I really don't recommend, but the other three are definitely viable solutions. Accepting the risk is something you may want to do if it's you know, something that is very low, low from, a, from a probability or from an impact standpoint. Um, you know, I can remember back as an examiner years ago, and now this is going to go way back to when we were still doing microfilm and fish. And I can remember talking with an institution who before they sent their items for processing, they would have a courier come pick them up and take them to their data processor, that they were not making copies, they weren't microfilming, they weren't fishing any of the documents before they sent them out. Well, as you can imagine from an examiner's standpoint, and even today from an auditor's standpoint, the, the response to that was, well, you know, you do have some risk there because what if those items are lost? then what are you going to do if you don't have a copy of them so that you can reconstruct those transactions, you know, what would you do? Well, I had several small institutions that their answer to that was that they had decided to accept that risk. They felt like it was low 
that the probability was very low and the impact to them would be very low.